What's up guys? Today we are looking at a knife from HEA Designs and this one is called the Hunter. This is a super cool front flipper. You guys know, I mean from watching past videos, I wasn't so keen on the front flipping scene but uh, this one kind of changed my mind. <laughs> Maybe it's just an easier one to use but we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. So yeah, this is the Hunter. This one is in carbon fiber, all right, titanium. Uh, frame lock. There's also other versions of this with some G10. There's a couple different colors. I think there's a black G10 version with a two-tone uh, blade. So a couple different options on this design. The one thing that stands out the most with this knife is that wicked, wicked point. All right, and we're definitely going to focus in on that as well. So first, let's close the knife. Show the packaging real quick so we can get that off camera. I was actually pretty impressed with the packaging. It's very nice. A lot of stuff these days come with you know, basically like a simple box with a sleeve, and that's what this is. But I don't know, the white is just kind of classy to me. Okay, the logo's all over the place, which is nice. So that's what we have. We have a sleeve, a nice thick box with the magnetic front. Just seems to be kind of a staple now for a lot of different companies. It's a little magnetic closure there on the side. A little sticker to let you know which model. So the CF uh, Hunter. So, design different. We have a little insert here. Thank you for buying uh, an HEA design products. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to describe, subscribe to the newsletter on HEADesigns.com. All right, for the latest on new products and giveaways. Uh, I do recommend subscribing to newsletters in general for all different sites and companies that you happen to like because it does literally remind you about that company and when something's new, you get that news, which is kind of cool. Uh, also, be sure to follow us on Instagram and join our Facebook group. Uh, I do follow them on Instagram. That's how I found out about this to begin with. I uh, didn't even know about this company before Instagram. So I'll just say that Instagram has brought me a lot of stuff that I didn't know about. Anyway, um, so yeah, we really appreciate your support and hope you enjoy from Sam. So yeah, that's the packaging. And of course, even though this is a pretty oversized box for the knife, so it's like kind of a fancy presentation. This very well could have been you know, just big enough to fit the knife. But it's like, I don't know, it's extra special because it's huge. So yeah, that's that for the collectors. Uh, a lot of people collect knives, more so than you guys probably will ever realize. And this stuff means something to them. They keep everything nice and pristine and they put it in a safe and they handle things with, you know, white gloves and such. And so that's why I'm showing that for the collectors. For me, packaging means nothing. Uh, although this is very cool and it's an awesome presentation when opening the knife, I don't, I don't really care because I don't store the packaging. But anyway, that's just me. So let's talk about this knife. First, let me give you some specs on here. Um, as I already mentioned, carbon fiber, you see it's 3D, all right, machined, very nice design, but carbon fiber scale over a titanium frame lock, all right, titanium pocket clip as well. There is a lock bar insert in here, okay, which doubles as you know a stop point for over travel. All right, so you're not going to hyperextend that uh, lock bar at all. Our blade here is a clip point. <laughs> Clearly, I don't have to tell you that, but flat grounds, 2.9 inches long. It's a 154 cm, which was actually really surprised to see. Happily surprised, 154 cm is a fantastic stainless steel, and it kind of gets put to the side. A lot of stuff. Overseas is uh, S35VN, you see a, a ton of D2. Even here in the States, it's just 154 hasn't been used as much as previous years, and I really do like this deal. It's an awesome compromise within you know price and quality and everything else. It's just, it's a fantastic performing stainless steel. Uh, this is razor, razor sharp. Not only is it a needle point, like quite literally, but uh, super, super sharp edge, maintain that edge. Did not take very much at all to strop it up. So again, just, Huge fan of 154, it was the thing back in the day. But people, I, I feel like people getting into knives today, it's it's overlooked because it's not used quite as much. But anyway, um, 3.8 inches closed, making it 6.7 inches overall. All right, it is super, super smooth. This is running on a ceramic ball bearing system. All right, so again, we have a front flipper. All right, well, let me, let me I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> we finished the specs, 2.8 ounces. Uh, it is, you know, smaller overall, you see it in my hand here, all right? So 2.8 ounces seems super light, but it's appropriate for its size. It's not heavy, nor is it, you know, extra light or anything like that. It's just right in the middle. So anyway, um, as you can see, there's also an opening slot. And this is a huge deal to me. When I first got this, I'm like, all right, yeah, front flipper. I was very interested in it. I've had a couple front flippers before. Didn't really get the hang of using them. It's just because it was new to me. Um, and then right out of the box, 
I mean, I was able to use this front flipper, all right, which is very cool. It's sticking up, you know, enough where you basically want to use the side of your thumb. And this is something I've experimented with as well. Because when I first got it, I want to use the tip of my thumb. Like, I, I just, part of me went like this, and I just wanted to try to get that down, and I was kind of, you know, flubbing it up a little bit here and there. I wasn't really getting it. And then I eventually realized that I don't have to be precise with, you know, holding the very tip of that. Just the side of my thumb, a little sweep, and your thumb sweeps over the top of the frame here. Uh, like I said, you could be way out here, you could be all the way over here, so it's just natural to grab it, put the thumb just basically on the edge, and sweep forward, all right? It's just really easy to do now. Um, it's something that I definitely struggle with. I don't know if, you know, this is just an extra awesome design. Probably not in the fact that front flippers are basically the same. It's more of, you know, more or less me learning how to use them. Uh, but I was, you know, very impressed with how easy that was to open once I got the hang of it. Uh, so the front flipper thing, eh, it's growing on me. It's definitely growing on me. I'm Traditionally, I like the, the regular flippers. But anyway, what was very, very important to me in this knife is you see this opening slot here, okay? It's super functional. The detent is strong enough. It works fine. I mean, you can see it kind of suck that blade in, and it's not going to shake out. I mean, really vigorously trying to get that blade out, it doesn't, all right? It works. It's a totally functional detent. However, it's very easy to overcome that. It doesn't take much pressure at all to pop the blade out traditionally. So if this was not your thing, or if you didn't get the hang of that, or if you just want to open it slowly, you can open it slowly. And that was a huge deal, okay? So big thumbs up for that. Uh, I just really appreciate that because some of the other front flipping knife uh, designs I've had, one had no other way to open it. It was front flipper or nothing. And especially since it was new to me, it was very frustrating because I didn't have the option to open it slowly or open it any other way. All right, but with this one, not only the front flipper, but you can easily open it slowly, okay, as to not scare people, if that's a concern. So, yes, that is that. Um, as far as the lockup, I mean, it locks up perfectly every time. You can see it's an early lockup. I'm going to do a separate video on the lock bar inserts just to get the information out. I was going to do it in this video, but I'll do a dedicated video for that for people who are interested in the purpose, really, of a lock bar insert. Because you see it on a lot of knives today, especially higher-end knives. Uh, it's just, it does serve a purpose. It's not just there to be there. So I'll talk about that in a separate video. So it's coming in a little closer. Again, look at that sculpted carbon fiber scale. Very, very cool. All right, these different cutouts here. All right, as we look at the back spacer, I like the design. When I, when I first got this, I was looking at it, and I have like OCD, I guess, with certain things. And I thought, at first glance, I thought this line was right down the middle. And then I realized that it was on the left side. It hit the, the little you know, circle cutouts, kind of their design, uh, and then goes to the right side here, and it was freaking me out. It was like, uh, I just wanted to be centered, because that's because I'm weird, I don't know. But it, it's totally fine now. <laughs> my my fear of the crooked line, for some reason, has gone away. Uh, pocket clip works totally fine on this. You can see it's landing on the flat side. All right, it's nice and smooth, so no issues at all with uh, putting this in or out of the pocket. It is a little bit small in the front. Um, it didn't take much, but I did have to use, you know, tip my nail to lift that up. Whereas some different pocket clip designs, I can just push it and it can overcome the material. But I was wearing denim jeans most of the time when I was carrying this. So, you know, take that into consideration. It is a thicker pocket edge if I was using, you know, basketball shorts or even if I was uh, wearing some different cargo pants, it might have just slipped right over. But I do this with some pocket clips. I mean, as I'm putting the knife in, I just use tip my finger to lift it up just enough so the material kind of bunches underneath and then I can overpower it. As far as carry, this does point up. All right, so it's not deep conceal or anything like that. This is what's showing. And I was originally concerned with the bottom portion of the knife being kind of pointed. I thought that would dig into my gut. Being a big guy, it, it happens. It happens with gun stuff. It happens with some knives, some knife designs, where if I'm sitting down, or especially if I'm in a sitting position, and I lean forward, you know, all my fat and gut and all that rubs on the top of the knife. And obviously being pointed, you would think that would be uncomfortable. But I had no issues with it whatsoever, just in my daily usage when I was carrying it. Um, so no pinching or anything like that. As far as that actual design on the bottom, uh, you can see how it fits in the hands. I thought maybe that would kind of cup the bottom of, I mean, it looks like it, it does cup there. It doesn't do anything. It, it's not a positive thing. It's not a, a negative thing. It doesn't feel uncomfortable, but it doesn't add anything either. Even in like reverse grip, you think, all right, yeah, you can put your thumb there, which you can, but I wouldn't stab this into anything, not even styrofoam, just because of that tip. All right, so... And uh, continuing with ergonomics, there's a little bit of jipping on the back here, but it's kind of even with the frame. All right, you could feel it with your fingertip, 
but it's not like extra aggressive or anything like that. It is very comfortable in the hand. I don't get a full four finger grip as you can see here. It, it cuts a little bit shy of that, but it is very comfortable to use. So let's focus in on that point. All right, that is a heck of a point. Now, when I first got this, I was very much guilty of babying it. All right, I opened it up. I mean, I already knew the design obviously, but when I first got it, I opened it up. I was looking at it, I'm like, that man ought to be fragile. That thing is gonna snap off uh, once it just sees uh, some cardboard or something. Uh, and I did, I babied it. And I realized, you know, after, cause I EDC'd this for maybe two days straight when I first got it. And it went right in my pocket, started using it right away. But when I was cutting stuff, I was like extra fragile. You know, I'm like, oh, that tip, it's gonna snap off. And then I soon realized that I had this knife. This is the most comparable knife blade. This is a cheap Sanren Mew knife uh, from China. And this has a very, very fine point. But because it's a super cheap knife, this one's not. This specific one's 220. The G10 versions are 200. I don't know if I mentioned that already. Um, I did not baby this. I use this how I would use any other knife. So after kind of remembering that and digging this blade up as well to compare them, uh, I started using this more gingerly. You know what I mean? I was a little less worried about breaking the tip and more concerned about just using it just to see. You know, I, I kind of just took a big swallow and thought, uh, if it breaks, it breaks. And it's part of the testing process. You know, I didn't want it to break. So in looking at this blade, you could see this is almost as pointy. Actually, let me compare the two. Okay. Now this was as pointy, but you could see with use, that very, very tip has slowly rounded off in comparison. So basically it was a reminder that I can use this knife and you know what, if the tip snaps, that's the purpose. That's why I'm using it to test it out and let everyone know what happens, right? That's the whole point of the thing. So um, I decided to start using it a little bit more aggressively. I wouldn't say I used it hard. Uh, I used it appropriately. I cut a ton of cardboard and there's one point where I had a box I was cutting down and like after each cut, I tend to kind of like check it out. Uh, did, I, did this something happen to that tip? Uh, I end up going through this box and I just cut and cut and cut and I was not, you know, specifically looking at the tip anymore until I was done. And when I was done, I inspected it and it was fine. All right, so there's definitely that like jitters of this thing is gonna break. With all that being said, you could definitely use this knife, but I will tell you, if you just use this like a regular EDC and don't worry about it, you will eventually break this tip. It is way too fine to continuously be used over and over again and not bump something, you know, rub into something and just snap off. So that being said, I would definitely conclude that this is more of a gentleman's knife. It's something you'd wear on a special occasion. It's something that you would use with a little bit of caution, a little bit of reservation, okay? Because no matter how awesome the steel is, no matter how well a knife is made, that geometry just can't withstand a certain amount of pressure. Okay, if I were to put this against the side of the table and push down, I can probably snap the tip off, even just on a wood table, just because it is so fine. So of course that brings into question, why would it be designed that way? If it was gonna be fragile, why make it? Why not make it more, you know, more like everything else? Well, exactly, because it'd be like everything else. This is different. So although this is a very fragile tip, this also has advantages that other blades don't. Something as simple as a splinter. Okay, look how easy it is to grab the skin, okay, that tip is so fine. If you had a splinter in your finger or something, this is the knife I would want to use to get it out. All right, absolutely ridiculously fine and would excel compared to pretty much any knife. Whatever knife you have in your pocket right now, I promise is not as pointy as this. This is probably the most pointiest tip on any knife I've ever seen ever. And I've literally handled thousands and thousands of knives. So it has that advantage, it, it's different. The whole idea of the company, HEA Designs, they make knives that are different. If you look at their other designs, they're funky. And either people are gonna love them or gonna hate them. Some people are gonna look at this and say, wow, that is awesome, I want one. And other people are gonna be like, there's no way. There's no way I'm not gonna, because they just are interested in EDC knives and stuff, and they understand that this would be too fragile for that task. Now granted, even if this tip did snap off, you, it's still fully functional, but that would obviously be a problem. It would bug people. So I love the knife. It is awesome, it's smooth, it functions, I mean, perfectly. There's nothing nothing bad about it. The only negative would be the actual design, but that's the selling point, the fact that it's different. So it's certainly not gonna be for everyone. I'm here to tell you it is 100% a quality knife. The 220 price tag, again, specifically for the carbon fiber, it's an extra $20. All their other models in the G10 are 200, so let's call it a $200 knife. Uh, for $200, I, I definitely think it's worth it. 
it's worth it in quality, it's worth it in performance. And again, you're gonna have that advantage of having such a, a finite tip. However, I would not put this in your pocket to carry every single day. It's just one of those things. That's my recommendation as an EDC knife, not the knife. You can't really beat on this knife like some people expect from their cutlery. All right, so just keep that in mind. It's for a specific type of, a collector obviously would really like something like this, but it could still be a user. It's just on certain occasions and with certain reservations. All right, obviously using some common sense, don't beat on it or you will snap that tip, okay, guaranteed. So yeah, other than that, I mean, it's really cool. Attention to detail, I do like the overall design of it. But yeah, I mean, just super smooth. The front flipper deal is just, it's kind of cool. It, it, it's definitely, it's something you have to get used to, but like I said, now I'm used to it. It's just kind of fun and different, you know, and that's the whole point. It's definitely a different type of knife. So yeah, that is the Hunter from HEA Designs. Pretty cool, I like it. If you guys have any knife uh, from this company, let me know what model you have, what you think of it. So this was the first and only knife I've used from this company. Like I said, I have been following on uh, Instagram for a while now, so I've seen their other knives. Nothing really specifically interests me until they started posting pictures of this. I thought this was very, very fascinating. It is really unique. It does offer something that most other knives don't, and that's what makes it special. So thoughts, feelings, comments, you know where to put them down below. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow with another video. Take care.